Hey guys, how you doing? We're going to do a quick little opening here to this episode, which began with the last episode right up there in which we talked about the nightmare that is trying to wire up an arch top guitar, whether it's got uh, pickups on it and holes that go to pickups or you're working through F holes and using uh, coat hangers and dental floss or whatever I use. But you'll remember that we made a template out of a guitar body. We just traced around it on a piece of paper, transferred it to cardboard, and then it ended up with this wonderful piece of scrap apparatus. And what we're going to do today is we're going to avoid this mess, and we are going to wire up the Mississippi Mud Slide for the umpteenth time because when I built this guitar I gave you a playlist start to finish and you saw these different hardware options so that said we're gonna take our template and we're gonna avoid this mess we're gonna save wire we're gonna save uh, time we're gonna be more effective and the best thing about this is we can test to see if this works before we start putting in in this so that said there will be a link to how to build the template in a minute or two here but let's get to the bench okay guys let's start here you know this guitar to be the mississippi mud slide it was a kit guitar uh i did a start to finish it's long if you click on that link right up there right about now you are going to find the complete build out of this guitar opening the box all the way down to people playing it and it even does an altar call in the church again hover your mouse right up there right about now but archtop guitars especially those that don't have the pickup cutouts are horrendous to put electronics into because you're dealing with f holes and sometimes the f holes aren't big enough i did one called the East LA cutaway in which we didn't cut any holes in it, but we had to wire everything through the F holes. I'm going to give you an episode to that uh, episode. I'll give you a link to the episode where we did the wiring on the East LA cutaway right up there right about now, and you'll see the challenges. You're using coat hangers and who knows what. But when you wire up a guitar like this, it's very easy to end up with this kind of a mess because you are trying to put it in after the fact. You've got a three-way switch up here that controls the two pickups. You've got a volume and tone control for each one. You've got a jack. You've got a ground everything. You've got the ground running from here. And so, again, this is pretty common and then once you're putting these things on you don't know is this going to work uh, whatever so the template that we did and i'm going to give you a link to that episode i'm already into my third i card here but i showed you how to build a template that makes it all really easy so let's have a look at that template and get it set up oh i'm a little forgetful this morning i wanted to show you what's got to go in here we've got a three-way switch the toggles between two pickups here's one this is the bridge pickup we've got four potentiometers to put in and we got to jump between those potentiometers with capacitors that affect the tone control all kinds of wiring and you can see by it just laying up here like this it kind of gives you an idea how quickly you can get here so let's look at the template let's get it laid out and then we can solder up everything we need to do neatly and where it actually fits the guitar and goes in fairly easily rather than trying to fish this mass in okay so it all started here we put the Mississippi mud side on a piece of cardboard big enough to trace around the body then the hardware store has this cool material. It's blackboard on one side and whiteboard on the other. So if I'm wiring something up, I can just basically, 
uh, take a dry erase marker and write uh, pickup one, neck pickup, bridge pickup, however I want to do this. So what ends up happening is if it's a right-handed guitar, this is like this here, the Florentine cutaways up there. So what I simply do is take my pieces apart, the potentiometers, and they would come up through this way. So I just basically turn this over, put four pots in, um, put my three-way switch up here, again, coming from the bottom, like so, and get everything laid out like that where everything is sticking up where it needs to be, and I would even lay out the pickups where I'm looking at the top of the guitar here. And so, with everything laid out like this, again, with the right-handed configuration, it would look like this. You've got your volume and tone controls, your three-way switch. So, you can see that the nuts are actually on there. They're not on there too tight, so I can spin these things around. But when I flip it over, look at that. Everything is right here where I can just take a soldering iron and just touch it on the individual connections. Everything is right out here in the open. It's easy for me to work on. And then I can lay my pickups right here. So that's the neck pickup. There's an N on it. That's the bridge pickup. And then all I really have to do is figure out at the end where my jack goes, which is right over here. And I can take shielded wire like this and I can start up here I can do whatever I need to do to end up and lay this wiring out where it's just the right length and it's not turning into this mess you see that and so I can take zip ties or whatever I need to do and then the last thing I'm going to do is this won't be together the wires will be coming out of it and all I have to do at the end once this is all done is fish some of this stuff through with dental floss and hook this up and everything will be built and loomed up in a way where it all comes together and it goes back easy easy back into the guitar so you don't have that struggle the next important thing is all I have to do is rig this up and I can put once everything is done plug it into an amp and I can tap on things and make sure that everything works before I put it in the guitar and then I just put it in the guitar very easily so what we're going to do today is we are going to rig up a setup with two pickups a volume and tone control for each of the two pickups and we're going to hook it to a three-way switch so that's the wiring so that's what we're going to learn today is how do you wire two pickups on a three-way switch where you can kick on one pickup the other or both so let's get the soldering iron out and get to work okay the first thing I want to talk to you about is the three-way switch you are going to see that I am a heat shrink freak because I don't want anything touching each other that has power to it. So let's zoom in a little bit here. If I can get the right zoom in. There we go. And get down to this three-way switch. The three-way switch has lugs on it. And this one here is the ground this one here let's turn this around has three lugs an outside lug here an outside lug here and then two jump to the middle they come together and what that allows for is when I flip this switch if I flip it this way it breaks contact with this one 
if it, I sw flip it the other way, it breaks contact with this one and makes one with this one. But if I leave it in the middle, they are all active, both pickups. Now, the way this wires is your ground comes here, and that ground eventually runs to the jack. And the middle lug here, where the two come together, go to the hot wire of the pickup or the jack, excuse me. Okay, so we've got this back up here. Um, we are going to need to run a wire from the ground on the back of the three-way switch and a wire from the two center lugs because when you flip the switch it will either allow one lug to be open and the other one the connection broken to depending on which way you flip the switch but when you leave it in the middle both lugs are hot and that means one of these goes to one pickup the outside one goes to the other when the switch is in the middle they both it runs both so both are on now rather than run loose wires and have a big mess going on I've got this four strand wire you're gonna see me using a lot of shrink wrap little pieces of shrink wrap because I don't want these wires ever touching each other you gotta remember putting this inside of a guitar and taking it out once everything's put together is a hassle so we're gonna take this wire here we're gonna separate everything out and one of these will go to the ground one will go to the center lug of the three-way switch and then those two will feed back to the input jack the other two will run to the hot side of the potentiometer on the volume control so this wire rather than try and strip it and everything you take a little piece of wood you lay this on here and you take a razor knife and you score it around and you flip this back until you can see the inside wires and you continue your cut and then pull this off and then you strip everything get it ready and then we'll put little pieces of shrink wrap on each one of those that once they're attached to the three-way switch we can just slide them up and shrink rack them wrap them with this puppy now I'm going to give you a link below to a really cool Stumac video about exactly wiring like this. Um, it's going to give you some more information, that kind of thing. But that's basically a good video that shows you how to wire guitars. And I will give you a, a link below. So let's get on trying to figure out how to lay this out. So we will put our pickup up here neck pickup goes up here again I want to make sure that they're in the orientation that they will be when we flip this over and stick the stuff in as it would be in the guitar so measuring things out a little bit and knowing where these things are is a good thing so um, we're gonna take this and figure out maybe it's good for me to bring this around with enough slack to go behind the support pillar that's inside the body of the guitar for the bridge area. So we lay all this stuff out and start soldering it up. And you can see that rather than having the mess of all the wires, this loomed up and being the way it is, is a good thing. Okay, I've done a couple soldering videos and I don't wanna redo everything and take you down that rabbit hole, but I wanna show you, I've got a nice stand here that holds the soldering iron. It's got a place for a sponge, so I just clean the tip off, and I make sure that I tin everything ahead of time, probably out of the range of the camera here. There we go. Let's try that. So each one of these wires, I've got them cut back and where I need them to be. I've tinned everything, including the soldering iron tip, and then put it on this wet sponge, and so everything's ready to go. That's really important. Bad soldering jobs don't tend to show up until they're in the guitar when you're moving everything around. 
So let's start here. We're going to put a piece of black shrink wrap on this. It's already tinned. And so I can put it on the back of the lug. And then we will just solder this up. It's going to take a little time to put things together. And that's okay. You see, I can turn this and like so. And then I can take my time and... and um, Squeeze things together like this. Make sure everything is nice. And it's like I said, it's easy to move this thing around and spin these around. And the soldering becomes really easy. And then I simply take my soldering iron and there we go. You want to make sure that you don't get solder jumping across this part because then the switch won't work. Once I get that soldered up and cooled down, I just slide the shrink wrap over it. Nothing can touch. Okay, now I have the green wire. Let me get the pointer out here. The green wire is going to go to the hot wire on the input jack. And... That means that it needs to run to these two lugs pushed together. So again, each side of the switch has two sticking out of it. And then the center one of both is put together here and will run to the input jet. Okay, you'll notice here that I've pulled the tabs on the sides back enough to get to the center here. And also that I've used this alligator clip that I'm using as a heat shrink most of the time so we don't melt fragile things like these capacitor leads and burn out the capacitor. But I've got that up here because if you get the shrink wrap too close while you're soldering, you're going to shrink it and then it turns into a hassle. So now that this is here like so, I can just pull all of this down and flip the push that down like so and push the shrink wrap over the lead like so okay so you can see here that I've pulled the white wire out of the four wire strand and put it off over here where I'm going to solder I put a piece of blue shrink wrap on there again these Alligator clips that I'm using for heat shrinks work well to keep the shrink wrap out of the way. But blue is for bridge. And then I'm going to put the neck pickup wires that will go down to the pots for each one on the outside. Okay, so there we have everything we need. Everything is nice. Um, and now finally what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the zip tie and make sure everything gets pulled down together where it's not flopping around and loose. And the way I have tucked all these together, that wiring loom will fit right there. And nothing will move except the Chick Flick Teal scissors that are cutting off the end. That is a clean one owner installation there. So now we're going to bring our shielded strand of four wires. Look at how nice that lays there. We're going to bring it down to here. And I want to peel it back and give myself enough room here. Because I'm going to turn these around. We've got to jump uh, tone capacitors between these and all this stuff. So I want to give myself plenty of room. Um, but we're going to start peeling this back now and hooking it up to where our input jack would usually go onto the potentiometers, which is a center lug. Okay, so I've cut that off, and I'm going to want to make sure there's enough room to move around and go around the pickups and everything here and down into here. And so I should be okay right here. Now, if I try to cut this and spin this, I'm going to end up nicking the wires inside of the loom. So again, I'm going to take and make a little cut here very carefully and go around. And then once I 
make that cut, I can open this up. That's the first thing I want to do is be able to open this up. There we go. I haven't nicked anything. So then I can just do this and go all the way around until I get that center or the outside part of the harness off. And then I can just pull it off like so with a little bit of help here. And I strip all those wires off like that. And then I can make all my runs in here wherever I need to be, including the ones that will go down to my input jack. Okay, guys, so we want to remember here now that this is upside down. You're looking at the inside of the guitar. If I am playing, I want my um, neck pickup control, volume control, to be closest to me where I'm playing the strings and the bridge pickup to be lower down below those. So what I'm going to do is I am going to run the wire from our switch. Remember, this is not the hot wire from the pickup. This goes to the center lug where you would normally attach the input coming from your jack back here. So you'll notice that I have put red shrink wrap back here and we just go to center lug and boom, there we go. Let it cool a little bit and then we just slide down the shrink wrap over the top and melt it and everything will be awesome. Look at that. None of these can touch each other. Okay, now we've got the same thing over here coming down to the bridge pickup. Remember, we use the white wire and put blue shrink wrap on it so I don't get lost here. And we've got the center lug on the volume pot ready to go. Just like so. Let that cool and pull the shrink wrap down. Okay, now the next thing, while we are here, before we get anything else hooked up in here, we're going to have to run jumper wires and grounds to each one of these to connect them to each other. And you'll see why in a bit. But this takes quite a bit of heat. And so we're just going to tin the bottom and get ourselves some solder on each one of these because we'll have to put jumper wires on each one here in a little bit so we're gonna do like so and get them ready for that all four of them are gonna have a ground wire jumping from each one we want to remember that when we're doing that we don't want things showing up on the F hole through the F hole this way so we're gonna be careful to make our runs to where we put a loop in this one and it hides below the F hole. Okay, so while we are here, we're gonna run these jumper wires that go to ground on each one of these and get those out of the way while we're here. Okay, just in case I didn't tell you, this is pushback wire. Um, so again, we're just jumping across. This is pretty easy if you've done the prep work and you just heat up your solder there and you'll find that these these uh, jumper wires are going to be pretty handy for keeping the potentiometers together later when you're trying to fish everything up through the holes in the real guitar with dental floss and the like. Okay guys, this is a huge mess, or at least it looks like it. So let's back up. We have a ground wire coming out of the harness, the four-wire harness. It's coming from the three-way switch where the ground is up there. It's right here. I grounded it to the volume potentiometer for the neck pickup. Now, because we ran a jumper from this pickup or this pot to this pot, Notice this loop up here. This will hide above the F hole. You'll never see it. So that's why this one's so long. 
it jumps to here, and then it jumps to here. So basically what you're looking at here, ground wire out of the three-way switch is grounded. There's jumpers to each potentiometer, and now there's two more wires coming to the picture because we need the ground for the input jack, which goes with this, hot to the input, ground to the input jack, and then we've got this one more that goes to the wire that grounds the string coming off of the trapeze tailpiece. Trapeze tailpiece connects to the bridge, to the strings, so everything is grounded. This is just one big ground wire that runs to everything. So now we got to start thinking about what do we wire the individual pickups to? And that's going to be really simple. Okay, so now we are bringing in the first pickup, the neck pickup. This is the volume pot. We've got ground on this lug. And the first lug over here, the one more clockwise, is going to need to have the hot wire from the pickup attached to it as well as the capacitor that's going to run from that lug to the center lug of the tone control pot right here. So we have to put these two together here. Now I'm going to put some shrink wrap over these. I'm also, when I'm soldering this, going to use these alligator clips for heat sinks because if you solder directly along that wire, you may burn this out. So let's get that done. I'll show you what it looks like. Now I've put shrink wrap on both sides of the uh, wire coming in, the hot wire from the pickup, the neck pickup, and also the capacitor running off to the tone pot because I don't want anything shorting out along the way here. So these will all be protected from each other. When things start getting mashed up into the guitar, there's no sense in doing all this and then figuring out later, oh, well, you know what? Things are touching each other inside the guitar. I also want to make sure that I've got enough room for this to move around a little bit. I don't want it to be tight because when I'm trying to fish these things in the hole, this has to have a little bit of slack. Again, the tone capacitor goes to the center lug of the tone pot and we're just going to touch that right there it doesn't take too much remember these are really easy to burn up and remember the more counterclockwise lug on the pot over here on all of them in fact have been bent over and grounded back into themselves there's jumper wires of ground to everything okay now we've got the second pickup or the bridge pickup. I've got it color coded blue, but it's the same thing. We're going to the most clockwise lug on the volume pot with the hot wire uh, from the pickup. We have the ground wire already onto the back of the volume pot. Now we're just going to hook up the capacitor that runs along with the hot wire to the first lug. We're going to solder that and then jump that to the tone control pot center lug just like we did over here. Again, don't forget to put shrink wrap on the lead to the capacitor and also to use some type of a heat sink so the heat doesn't run up the wire and burn this out. They are very fragile. So now we're just going to jump over to here and solder that in. And then we're getting really close to putting this thing on an input jack and grounding the string wire in the guitar and seeing what it does. All right, we are pulling everything off the template and we're going to fish this stuff back into the body with some dental floss and some other coat hanger tricks. And then we will plug it in and see what it looks like. But... I'll tell you what, for nothing more than soldering and lay figuring out how the layout goes and how much wiring you need, this thing is incredible. Okay, guys, what a mess, huh? 
So I'm going to make this real easy. Sorry I'm being redundant, but sometimes when I'm learning something, I have to watch two or three times. So I've got a neck template here. I've got something that I already drew out. Look at this. Boom, I don't have to worry about this. I just off like that. If it's chalk on the other side, I do the same thing. But let's lay this out one more time. Um, We've got a three-way switch up here. It has a ground lug here. It has a lug that goes to the input jack. It has a hot wire lug that goes to one humbucker and it has a lug that goes to the other humbucker. So you got neck pickup, neck humbucker, bridge humbucker. We know from what I told you that this is the ground, the one lug, and that the center lug is actually the way that you can switch between this one and this one, or have both of them going. Now, we know that the input jack, which we'll put in this weird color, is down here somewhere. Let's call it down here, okay? And let's say that we also know that the ground to the strings is coming off the trapeze, and that will be here. Ground to the strings, input jack, input jack has a negative side, input jack has a positive side. The wire up here to the center needs to end up on this three-way switch, needs to end up running down to the positive side of the input jack. So let's do bridge humbucker and let's do neck humbucker each of those has a positive and a negative positive negative or ground now we want to make sure that the switches are the way we want them. If we want if someone tells us, "Oh, I want the neck pickup to be the controls here and this is a a volume." Oh, look at that. I almost did it wrong. This is a volume and this is a tone and the other set, volume, and tone, I need to know up here where the wiring is coming off, which way I want the switch to go, which ones of these run to here. So, I am going to label these now. There are three lugs. One, two, three. There are three lugs here. One, two, three. There are three lugs on each of these. One, two, three and the tone has one, two, three. So what's going to happen here is the hot wire off of the neck humbucker is going to go to the outside lug of the volume pod. The hot wire off of the bridge is going to go to the volume outside lug over here. So most clockwise, it always works that way. Now we're going to come off of the three-way switch and we are going to, because this switch is already fed by the input jack, we are going to take the red wire and we're going to take it to the center lug of the volume pot for the neck. Now, 
if you were doing a cigar box guitar or something, this is where your input hot side of the input jack would be going to. So, blue side or neck side, bridge side, excuse me, up here of this switch, I'm going to draw a little jump over every time we do this. And this will come down off the three-way switch again to the center lug. Now, the grounds for each of these, let's do them here. The least counterclockwise go to the left. The third lug always gets grounded back into it the body. The, so you bend this lug over and solder it to the top of the potentiometer. You're going to do that with all four. Ground them. Okay. Now what needs to happen is we are going to ground all of these together and do this in a way where you hide the wiring loop where it's not visible through the F hole which is going to be right here somewhere. We're going to jump a ground wire from here to here and to here. Now we've got a few ground wires to pick up along the way. Since these are all looped together, we can take the ground wire from here, the ground side of the three-way switch up here, and jump it into a wire that we have here. We can tie in the wiring that is going from the input jack and coming from the strings. We can attach those, say, here and here. But all of the grounds, including the ones coming off of the individual humbuckers, are going to have to go to ground to make sure everything is grounded. Okay, there's a million ways to do this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our capacitor, our tone capacitor. Again, there are a number of ways to do this, but the tone capacitor has to attach in where the volume control is coming from the humbucker. So red or neck humbucker, I'm going to take that capacitor and I'm going to tie into the center lug here on this one. We're not going to use this one and jump it to here. Well, there's some people that do this a different way. This is how Gibsons are wired, by the way. Jump it from here to here. And of course, that capacitor, I've told you about uh, heat sinking it and doing all that kind of thing and actually putting um, heat shrink uh, here and the capacitor is here. Let's do this like this, yeah. And you're going to do the same thing over here on the bridge side capacitor. You're going to run from the center lug here off to the most clockwise lug or on the volume side of the bridge. Again, capacitor is going to be here. Protect the wiring. You may choose to do this another way. There's a way to do it up here. But this is what we just did, and it was all sitting right here, then we just fish it in the guitar. Once we're done, bingo. If you feel that you really want to have this the way you want, use uh, Sharpies of the right color and lay this out permanently. All right, there you go. I'll tell you what, this beats this any day. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that is to take the Mississippi mud slide and take it out to an old reliable that knows my guitars and can play my guitars. And that, my friends, is Frank Goldwasser. He has made a trip uh, from doing blues festivals out in Europe, back in here to Ventura, and then a couple more gigs out here. And I am going to go see him and Ventura, and he's going to give this a spin. And then what's going to happen is this guitar is going to make a trip out to where it really wants to be, and that's Mississippi to see my friend Wendy, Gene, Garrison. So 
It's going to go out there where the cotton is. Hey, thanks, Deke Rivers. This is actually Mississippi cotton. Shh. And I'm going to do cool stuff with it. But that said, let's go see if my wiring job worked out. Off to Ventura. <laughs> Bye. Uh -huh.